Okay, so problem 31 is coin sums. So the problem is we have the, uh, the standard eight coins in the UK. Now, what we need to do is find the number of combinations of these um, that make two pounds. So how many different ways can you make two pound using any number of these coins? So we're going to do this a really inefficient way. Um, I would imagine there's a better way to do it with the combinations module, but I can't bother looking into it and I'm quite interested to see how this goes and I think it's a bit more intuitive. So let's get into it. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a, a counter, so this is going to be number of ways and so far we don't know that there's any, so it's going to be zero. Now we're going to loop over every coin, so we just go back over here. So obviously you can make two pound by taking 200 one pennies. Now with one penny being the smallest coin, we know that if we do a loop over 200 and another loop over 200 and another loop over 200 and then take all these possibilities, um, all these possible combinations like between zero and 200 of each coin and then find which ones actually make two pound, then sum them up we know we have an answer. So first of all I'm just going to code that and then I'm just going to show you how inefficient this is but then we're going to add a couple of improvements to it. So 4a in range and then we use 201 um, because obviously it's not inclusive. I'll just copy and paste this. We need eight of them so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So already hopefully you can see how terrible this is going to be, but I just want to show it. So what I'm going to do here is just import, oops, import time, and we're going to have a Start time oops. Um, equals time dot time. Now, right here, this is where we're going to say um, if we've actually found a correct combination, then we need to increment our number of ways. So, a correct combination would be where um, so a times by one because that's going to be the number of one pennies plus b times by two that's going to be the number of two pennies plus c times by five and so on hopefully you see where this is going um, So if that is equal to 200, then we know we've got a combination that's correct. So number of ways plus equals 1. And right down here, print out the number of ways. We call main. Now, just to show how inefficient this is, we're going to print out um so time dot time minus our start time right here save this I'm just gonna copy this for the future so save this run this you see pretty fast um printing out this time dot time like relatively quick probably like every what one every one one thousandth of a second um we're printing out about five times, something like that. So pretty quick, but now if we just move this up, so it, it was uh, it was on like this row right here. If I just move it up two, so two levels. Uh, why isn't it working? Did I really not copy it? I thought I did. Copy. Okay, 
Okay, so one up to paste it into there, save that. You're gonna see already this is really slow. Like three and a half seconds per cycle. And now you gotta consider three and a half seconds to get to here means it's gonna take two hundred times it to get onto this level, and then two hundred times that to get onto this level, so this is gonna take forever. Um I'd imagine it's like into the millions of seconds. I'll just do a quick calculation because I'm interested. So we've got 3.5 times by 201. Uh, sorry, two, is it 201? Uh, yeah, because we're including 0, right? So 201 times by 201 times by 201 times by 201 times by 201. 1.1 billion seconds. Um, we divide that by like 600 to get the number of hours. Divide by 24 for the number of days. Divide by 365 for the number of years. About 36,000 years. So yeah, obviously we're not going to be leaving this one in. I'm expecting an answer. So. Oops, let's just cancel that without all those pastes in there. Okay, so obviously this isn't going to work. So um, what we can do is we don't need to loop over 201 for every coin because the only coin that needs to go over 201 is uh, the one penny. The two penny obviously needs to go over half of that, 101, um, because then that reaches two pound and obviously doesn't need to go any higher. So if we just drop all these down to what they need to be. Um, I think this is right. What was this? Five. Eleven was what? Twenty pence. So five for twenty pence. Three and two. Now, if we run this, you're going to see uh, hopefully. Huge speed increase, so yeah, there we go. The uh, the print wasn't moved, it was still kept in the same spot, and you can see this is way quicker per cycle. So let's just move this up again, because this still unfortunately isn't quick enough, so we just got two more layers. Uh, still pretty quick, actually. Is this actually doable, I wonder? Let's go one more layer, check. Don't think it is doable. No, not really. So you can see each one of these is taking like what 0.4 here, 0.2 there, 0.1 there. Uh, how many cycles we've done there? Probably about 40, something like that. About five seconds, about point, probably about 0.2, 0.15, something like that seconds per cycle. And then you gotta consider we're gonna do 101 of these to get to this layer, and then 201 to finish. So you can imagine if we just move this up another layer, you'll see this is gonna be a huge amount of time to do each cycle. I think it's probably gonna take about 20 seconds to do a single cycle, and obviously 20 seconds times by 201 to finish the program. Um, I think that's about an hour of time. Something like that. Yeah, 17 seconds. So this is still going to take way too long, so we need some other improvement for this. So what we can do next is um I'm gonna get rid of this print now because it's pretty irrelevant at this point. But what we can do next is this sum right here, um basically what I'm thinking is when we get to the one penny, um if a times 1 um, is greater than 200 then we don't even need to check like B, C, D, E, F, G and so on um, we don't need to check any of them because we already know that the minimum that this sum down at the bottom could be is um, whatever A times 1 is A times 1 is a minimum bound on this function because you're only ever adding positive numbers to this so it's not going to make it any smaller. So if, if A was 201, um, this straight away is not going to be true. 
and therefore you don't need to check any of these. So if a times one is bigger than 200, we can just break. And um, the reason we can break is because continue would work here, um, but we can actually break because like, this is incrementing upwards. If it was incrementing down, then you'd need to just continue because you then need to check the lower values. But since we're incrementing up, we can break. And now that's not actually going to help us because um, 200 is the maximum number this could be. So a times one can only ever equal 200. It can't actually go go higher. But this piece of logic is sound. It doesn't actually break the code. It is correct if this number was to be higher than 201, and um, then this would help us catch it. Now this is important though because we can copy this, and shut it on the B line, and now a times one plus b times two is now our bound because we have b defined now and if if this is bigger than 200 then we don't need to check the rest because again this is the minimum bound for this function now hopefully you can see where this is going and um, we can do it for c so if we just copy this shut it on the c line and then add a plus c times 5 on there and um, so you can hopefully see this should improve speed as well. I am going to actually shut this print back in. Um, so time dot time minus start time. We're just going to write it now just to see um, what sort of improvement that makes. So this is on the top line now. Remember, this was uh, 17 seconds a cycle or something like that. I think it was. So you can see we've like almost halved it. Almost halved the cycle time. But now the important thing is um, the cycles will get shorter and shorter because the higher this is, the quicker this break is going to get hit. So you see this starts out at like 8.3 and then the next one is um, 8.6. Obviously these are going to be slightly irregular, but you'll see if Alex has run for long enough, um, these will end up getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, now while that runs and while I'm showing that, I'm just going to type the rest of this code up. Because obviously it does help to have the uh, the rest of these breaks in. Whoops, I've gone the wrong way here. Should be 50, should be 100. That there should be 50. That's fine now. Okay, so. If you look at this down here now, you should see these are actually shorter gaps towards the bottom. We've got like 8.3 up here, and then down at the bottom down here, this is a 7.4, this one's a 7.3, this one here is um, a 7.2, then we've got a, is that a 6, point, no, a 7, I'm not looking, whoops. So yeah, roughly 7 now, so we've dropped from like 8.3 down to 7, um, and this gap will just keep getting shorter, but obviously this cycle will then repeat 201 times um, and give us an answer. So if I just cancel this now, and save this, and I'll run it with all this new code in, it should be significantly faster, so you see, and hopefully you can see that the, uh, the cycles are getting quicker and quicker, and we have an answer. Now 73682, and it ran in 10 seconds, um, 73682 you see is correct, there's the answer right there. So that's how it can be done, this is one way, now I'm not certain it's the best way, I'm pretty sure it's not the best way, 
but hopefully this makes sense of how it works. Um, pretty like basic to just loop over all the combinations and find them, but then adding in this extra logic to, to break at the correct points um, really improves things and speeds things up. This uh, breaking logic actually means that these range functions could be any size, so we could say like um, range size equals, and we'll say like 500, and now if I just put this range size in, and into here, and save that, you'll see this actually still takes the same amount of time to run, because it's still hitting them breakpoints at the same time. Doesn't matter that we're looping over like 500 for days, it's never going to make it there, it's only going to make it to 200 and then break. So it means you don't have to manually put all them, uh, the range sizes in when you've got these breakpoints. So, yeah, hopefully this makes sense and helps anyone that's stuck on this problem. Um, like I said, not the best way to do it, but it definitely makes sense and I quite like it. It's quite, um, quite logical the way it flows. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.